Candles come first, and then, and then the candles can come and turn the table. I'll take a welcome. I think it was a couple of months. I'm like, I just told you're welcome. I, we've been doing the welcome. Yeah. 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 Lots of conversation. Is this on? I don't think this is on. No. Good morning, congregation. Welcome to all of you. It's so wonderful to see everyone here and lots of kind of energy around spring. We can feel that things are getting green and things are growing and and it makes us come alive, I think, a little bit, just like the earth has come alive in our where we live this time of year. So it's wonderful to have all of you. Hilda is going to share with us a mission moment. But um, as she does that, and during the prelude, we all went to gather our hearts, minds, and our spirit together as we worship God on this beginning of Holy Week and Palm Sunday. Good morning. I caught in the back of the church. So April, new month. This month is going to be a little bit different. So during the month of April, in place of special offering, we're going to encourage you to consider giving some time to community organizations. So it's more of a time than a money month. We'll tell you about a very important organization for Barnstead and Alton, and we will collect toiletries in support of their clients. The community group is New Beginnings, which you guys have all heard about um, in Laconia, but they service all our area communities. 
This organization, long supported by our church, offers free and confidential supports, advocacy, and crisis intervention for both Belknap County and Merriman County residents affected by domestic and sexual violence and stalking. They offer a 24-hour crisis line, support group, court advocacy, and emergency shelter. They also offer 24-hour accompaniment to the hospital and to the police department. And for our youth, they provide important educational opportunities at Prospect Mountain High School. CCMB will respond this month to their request for material goods. If you're also interested in volunteering at New Beginnings, they offer training for crisis line advocates and volunteers for short-term projects. So all this information is in your newsletter. So you can refer to the newsletter. Also the items requested are in your newsletter as well. And there are such things like toothbrushes, toothpaste, um, dental floss, hairbrushes, combs, but the list is in, again in your newsletter. We have in the back of the church, we have a basket and you can bring any of those items to church with you and then just drop them off in the basket and we'll take care of giving them to new beginnings. And we'll have other opportunities of volunteerism um, throughout the month. So there'll be more to come. Thank you. Please join me in our call to worship. Give thanks to God, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad.
Now please join me in the gathering prayer. Open our hearts today to hear your heart As we sing praise to you, O Zion, blessed is the one who comes in the Lord's name. We save our branches and shout Hosanna, and yet we have not always behaved as disciples. We have wandered from the path of Christ and stumbled along on our own believing our way to be superior. We, we had turned from those who had needed help because, because it wasn't, wasn't convenient for us to be in help or service. We have unsaid things that are known. Forgive us, God. Help, help us to turn our lives around. Help us to be Hosanna. Save us. Jesus, enter our hearts and transform our lives today. Know that God is always there to lead us, guide us, forgive us, comfort us, and encourage us. God is the God of grace and salvation today and forever. Jesus, who had blessed them, close folded to his breast. The children sang their praises, the simplest and the best. From all ever they followed, amid a chanting crowd, the victor palm branch waving and chanting clear. Just when I start, the furnace starts too. Well, I understand um, it's Palm Sunday, which is a special day I'm going to talk about. And um, I think Sunday's been, Sunday school is going to have a celebration of another special day. Do you know what it is? I think Brent knows what it is. Brent's friend. He said no, but I, I know. And uh, it's Brent's birthday, and we're going to celebrate that because it's useful. So, um, Oh, it was your birthday the other day. Well, you know better than me. What year was your birthday, Brent? April 1st. April 1st. Yes. April 1st. Is that you're not fooling me, are you? Okay. Well, today is another special day. So the day after your birthday, it's Palm Sunday. And you saw we all see palms. And I think you know the story of Jesus going into Jerusalem on a donkey and people shouted, Hosanna, they sound. They shouted, praise God. And this is the beginning of what we call Holy Week. And so this is the week of something they call the greatest story ever told. 
And it's the story about Jesus and the last week of his life. You probably know the story. So on Sunday or on Palm Sunday, they praise Jesus. And then by the end of the week, they are shouting, crucify him. So something changes very dramatically in Jesus' life and just in people's idea. And then Jesus, of course, is crucified on the cross. And then we go and we have a big and again, people are like, Christ is risen. So you go from this Hosanna to crucify him to Christ is risen. It's like this big mood and this joy to pure sadness and grief. And then again, joy. So it's just kind of this amazing week. And as Jesus went into Jerusalem, there was a reason he went there because thousands and thousands of people also went to celebrate the Passover. And you guys know what the Passover was with that celebrated? That celebrated the story of Moses. And remember when the Israelites were slaves in Egypt and Moses got them out of Egypt and they crossed the Red Sea. And there's this big story about that. So that's what the Passover was about. And that's why Jesus and all these people were in Jerusalem at this time. So there were lots of people there. And that's one of the things that caused the parade. There were so many people there, just kind of excited to be there and so it was a moment, but things kind of changed dramatically. So that's kind of the story of this week, but I just wanted to give you something to think about. And Anne made crosses, so I'm going to give you each cross. Some things that she's really good at that, and she will probably teach you if you don't know how to do it after the service. So I'm very glad to see you here on Palm Sunday. And I hope that you have a holy, holy week. All right, you can go back in and sit. And let us now wish one another the peace of Christ. La pax du Christ doit avec vous, et aussi avec vous. La paz de Dios sea contigo, y contigo. May the peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. Peace to you, Pat, and peace also to you, Susan, and peace, Roy. We're glad you're here today. So we read this morning from the gospel, one of the accounts of Palm Sunday, the one in Matthew. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her and tie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him that were following, they were shouting, Hosanna, the son of David, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Let us pray. God of all, as we hear this familiar story, may it reach our hearts in a deeper way 
So we may know your the breadth and the depth of love you have for us and how precious we are to Jesus. In the words of our mouth and the thoughts of all of us, be acceptable to you our strength and redeem. So I read this familiar passage again about Jesus riding into entering Jerusalem. And this is a story that is in all four of the gospels. And we listen to it um, at the same time every year, the Sunday before Easter, you all know that. And Jesus, as he prays into Jerusalem, he must mean to go to the temple after the parade because right after this story, Jesus is in the temple. And I kind of had never thought about that so much before. I was always thinking about the meaning of the coal or the foal or the coal and the foal and the spreading of the clothes or the cloaks and the leafy branches. But we all recall to that story of the temple when Jesus overturns the tables of the money changers. So what is he thinking during the parade? Does he know what he will find in the temple? Way back when I was in seminary taking Bible courses, I learned that one of the ways um, to read the stories is to enter the stories of the scriptures. It said that one of the ways for each of us to enter these stories is to find ourselves in the story and ask, who would or could I be in the story? Would I be one of those who would shout Hosanna and then cry crucify him at the end of the week? Would I be one of the disciples that would fall asleep out of exhaustion or overwhelming anxiety in the garden of Gethsemane in the whole story? Would I be like Peter if I got questioned or challenged about my faith, would I deny it? So I was instructed that you could just put yourselves in the scripture stories is one way to get into it. But another way to enter into the story is to try to understand what is happening in the context around the story, to think about what the characters in the story may be thinking about the events and all going on. So I wondered what would the disciples think during this parade? They must have suspected that Jesus would go to the temple in Jerusalem after he came to Jerusalem. Would they have any idea or would they be concerned about the turmoil that would get turned up? And as I said, we know that the story of Jesus riding a small donkey or a foal or whatever he rode into Jerusalem, whether one or two, occurred during Passover, which was that annual festival when thousands of people would come into Jerusalem and to the temple to celebrate the liberation of God's people from Egypt many centuries before. And so the population of Jerusalem would swell. They think sometimes two to three times its size during Passover. Now, we don't know exactly what the population of Jerusalem was during Jesus' time. It really differs vastly. Um, some historians put the number at 75,000, but it ranges between maybe 25,000 and 100,000. But that would mean that there would be a guesstimate that during Passover, it would increase up to 150 to 200,000 People And they, of course, would spill out from the city onto adjoining towns. And it was not just people that came, but it would be tens and thousands of sheep and lamb because this was a festival that demanded sacrifice. The story of the liberation of the people, the God's people from Egypt, involved the Israelite slaves sacrificing a lamb. So it would be all those animals, too. And then we also know that Pontius Pilate, who was the Roman governor of the region, who generally lived on the coast on the Mediterranean Sea, he was also present in Jerusalem at the time. And along with Pilate would have come hundreds of extra soldiers. So some surmise that while Jesus was entering from the gate in the east, Pilate, with all his soldiers, was entering an, a gate in West Jerusalem. So picture this dichotomy, the presence of the Roman army with their weapons riding on horses in one parade coming into town, contrasted with Jesus riding on a small donkey or a small colt with leafy branches 
and clothes and cloaks covering the ground. So early Christians who heard this story of Jesus, they knew the background of the story. They would have known the chaos of Jerusalem at Passover, the political tension that would be there with the Roman soldiers, the presence of Pilate. They could see in their mind's eye the two parades happening at the same time and what they knew would influence how they would interpret or understand the story. And they would see Jesus as one who came to give a message to those in power. Surmising all this, my interpretation of it, of course, influences my understanding of the story. The context of these parades on the opposite side of the city suggests to me that God is on the opposite of those authorities who oppress others, who grab power, who yield weapons for the purpose of keeping power and oppressing others. Jesus said, he does not come to earth to support those who have status or power. In his parade, he is mocking the powerful. He is mocking those with might. He is pointing to the true power of God found in humility and vulnerability. This is so antithetical to the way people generally understand the world. We live in a world that its ways are quite a challenge to having and being and holding of faith. We seek to connect with Jesus and to find God's truth in and through Jesus, but sometimes that truth of Jesus is hard to take. Yet the truth about who we are and who God is, the truth about life and death, and the truth about truth itself, those things are always beckoning us in our faith. I was reading a book of essays by a Christian novelist named Marilyn Robinson. And in one of her essays, she writes, a society is moving toward dangerous ground when loyalty to the truth is seen as disloyalty to some other higher interest. It is hard not to look at our society because we see all the indications of that statement everywhere. It's hard not to see it. Whether it is higher interest in greed or some sort of power or status, I don't have to name the situations or the instances. The accuracy of what Robinson says can be seen in most of the top 10 news stories. We engage with the biblical stories to find God's truth. And we can read the biblical stories again and again and get something new out of it, find new insight, a new truth each time we read it. When I get more insight into the biblical stories, I am encouraged to ask more questions about who Jesus is, what he was about. I seek a deeper truth. One of the truths that's inherent in all the stories and scriptures that I live by is that God is love. So when we interpret the stories, and we are all interpreters, when we read and hear the biblical stories, we try to at least hit a seed of truth, and we ask questions. And so I ask, how does this story tell me that God is love? How does this story show me that God is love? And then what does that mean in my life? In the gospel story read today, the story cries out to me that God's love is for a world and love is for those for whom the world is terrifying and an unjust place. It is a love that seeks to overcome the powers that oppress and repress. It is not coincidence that the events of Jesus' last life on earth take place during Passover that recalls the liberation of God's people who were enslaved in Egypt. As I told the children, the stories of Holy Week, they are passionate, they are intense, they are terrifying. But our faith is based on this, that through Jesus' life and death and resurrection, something happened that never happened in the world before. It had to do with God and sin and brokenness and hurt and forgiveness and reconciliation, all encompassed by God's great love for us. 
Now we enter Holy Week once again. We as individuals listen to the story, the whole truths about life that God would like us to know. What will you listen for this year and what will you hear? Will you pay attention to the suffering of Jesus with the knowledge that when you or someone you love is suffering in some way that God understands and cares for you and upholds you in that suffering? Will Jesus crying out in despair help you to understand that when you are convinced that the whole world has conspired against you and you are ready to give up, that God has hold of you? Will you attend to God's truth that death does not have the last word? As a community, these stories shape our life together. We always seek truth in them. We interpret them in our time and our celebrate this day and sing songs of praise. We acknowledge that God is working in us as individuals and in us as a community in our time of transition. We continue to seek to know God's truth and wisdom so we might be more fully the people that God means us to be and be more fully as a gathered community of faith, the fullness of the body of Christ that God means us to be. Amen. And may these good words preached in God's name give to God glory and honor. In this time when we are invited to give our offerings to God, let us with love and with gratitude, with knowledge of how God works in the world and what we remember about God during this week, let us give to God for God loves us, wants to make love in the world. So we give God with gratitude and with love offerings. Let us give our tithes and offerings.
may remain seated for our prayer of dedication. Let us say together, God, we seek to reach out to the world. Bless these gifts so that the world may know your love. Amen. As we come to a time in our community where we ask God for prayers, are there any prayers that people have to share this morning? God of all, hear our prayer. <laughs> Bill. Prayers for Abigail, who is having eye surgery surgery tomorrow. God of all, hear our prayers. Carolyn. With Passover coming, I want to pray for our Jewish brothers and sisters whose lives are not easy right now, and that, that we think on Passover of um, how important they are to our life. God of all, hear our prayers for our Jewish brothers and sisters. And I would also pray for our Muslim brothers and sisters through this month celebrate Ramadan and who are fasting each day and eating at the end of the day and this will be for 30 days. So um, our prayers with them also. And I'd also like to offer a, a prayer of thanksgiving for Mark Charles, who spoke to many of the UCC members at, up at Dartmouth last Sunday. And um, I wrote down the word um, lament. He talked a lot about lament and encouraging us to sit with our brokenness and the brokenness of the world. Sit and feel it deeply so that we too can help make a change. Gracious God. Hear our prayers. Last night, there was a big charity event in Concord for um, the people in Ukraine. And there was an immigrant from Ukraine who was there. And he had his own personal pictures of the devastation of war and his story of how he got out, which was, of course, very um, horrifying. And, you know, they, you know, just escaped bombs. And it was just really amazing. So I do want to continue to offer prayers for our friends in Ukraine. God of all, hear our prayers. Let us come to God in our prayers this morning. Oh God, we bring you the needs of our world, a world broken by division and suspicion, prejudice, hatred, and war. We pray for and remember the needs of the hungry, and the homeless, the wounded, and the despairing. We bring to you the needs of ourselves and those we love. We continue to remember Cashlin's son, Aslin, and Jim's brother. We pray for our Muslim and Jewish brothers and sisters, and pray for a world that shows love and reconciliation. We pray for Abby and her surgery. We also ask for prayers of thanksgiving for all those joys in our life, big and small. Hear us, O oh Lord, in however we come to you. Hear us in compassion and love. Rescue and restore us. And make us a people in whom your love may be seen or even glimpsed. In Christ we pray and say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive we forgive those who press us against us and lead us not in temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for us um, Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We gather here with you now, O Holy One. We ask you to speak to us through this bread and this cup. Remind us of all the stories we've ever heard about you. Imbue these symbols with your peace so that we might find your peace within us. Amen. The Lord Jesus, we know on the evening when he was arrested, he shared a meal with his friends, with those who followed him. And he took bread, and after giving God thanks for it, he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat this, do this in remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took a cup. It was a cup of wine, and after he had given God thanks for it, he offered it to his friends, those who followed him with these words. This is my blood poured out for you, the cup of the new covenant. Every time you drink this, you do this in remembrance of me. So now we eat and we drink in the memory of Christ Jesus and his great love for us. In this simple meal, we proclaim his life and his death and his resurrection and that he gave life to all people. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all things are ready.
करते हैं Let us pray. Holy One, we give thanks for gathering us together for this meal to remember that you are present with us, that you love us, and that by your spirit, you make us one with Christ. You seek to make us one with each other and one in ministry to the world, loving all. Christ, we pray. Amen. Before I pronounce the blessing and charge, I would like to hand out the rhythm instruments because actually maybe Brent would be willing to come up and hand them out. And following We're hoping after the benediction, if you would like, um, I'm actually hoping maybe Brent or Tracy would lead us um in the song because um they gave me the idea to do this <laughs> so we wanted to do we are marching in the light of god it has a lot of verses and so emily will start playing it and then if you'd like we can get up and we can march around the sanctuary and when it comes to the hymn that there's no words which is after dancing we'll come back and sit down and the last verse we will not use our rhythm instruments because it's we are praying in the light of god so we'll be still and we'll think about the words as we're praying in the light of god so that's how i'm hoping we can do it so i'll let brent hand out instruments for those who would like them and then i will pronounce the benediction and we will respond <laughs> If you don't have a rhythm instrument, also when we sing all the clapping, so we all we are an instrument in ourselves besides our voice.
How are you doing? Everybody got your instrument? Okay. So we will come to Christ this holy week. Today is only part of the story. We follow the story to Jesus' death and to his resurrection. So may your journey this week lead you into more fully into Christ's love. Amen. Hit it, Emily. reader today, Phil, and some graphic design and production work by Emily. Uh, let's see, what do we have coming up this week? We do not have uh, meditation on Tuesday evening, but we will have Bible study with Charlie at 10 a.m. It says 10.30.
but we are still having a few errors in our calendar of it saying 10, but it is 10 a.m. with Charlie uh, for Bible study on Wednesday. Uh, and that is in our Zoom room. And then Thursday, we will have meditation with Joanne White at 5 p.m. And we will have a Mom Day Thursday service here in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. as well as it will be online. And we will actually have some of our Northwood uh, congregation friends will be joining us here as well as they will be joining us online. I want to let everyone know that the Monday Thursday service is not the same Zoom link that you are used to using. It gives it a different meeting number than our typical one. So make sure if you want to tune in to Monday Thursday that you go to your weekly email blast and follow that link as opposed to your standard way and meeting member that you may have memorized already. Um, and then a wonderful Easter service on Sunday at 10 a.m. and it will be here in person and online. We have a lovely reminder that there's Holy Humor Sunday on April 16th. So that's the Sunday after Easter. And so we encourage you to bring your best jokes that are appropriate for the sanctuary but those about God, faith, and the church are highly recommended. Yeah. Such as my dad shouldn't bring barber jokes. Uh, he always seemed to have. Uh, and on to our announcements, we would love to sing happy birthday to Brent. Everybody, he went upstairs. We want to sing happy birthday to Brent. It, it was Brent's birthday yesterday. I am not a good singer, so I could not lead it. Um, but Rebecca can go up front because she has a better singing voice. Happy birthday to And if anyone else has announcements, um, feel free to um, come grab the microphone. I do believe we have some extra baked goods uh, for sale uh, from yesterday. If you have anything that you want to purchase, you can come see me to purchase anything um, left over from yesterday's pop-up sale. I know that I have spoken before about the reusable pad project that we're we're working on for Ghana this year. And I thought um, yesterday, I said, gee, you know, I've been talking about this, but I've never showed you any examples of what we're actually bringing. And, and these are two of the kits. We have three different styles because we can only order most of these. We can only order five at a time. So we are like a perpetual um, Amazon delivery on our road. Yesterday we got five packages. It was great, but um, there are two, these are two that I'll show you, and they are. This is called Mom's Desk, and it includes five pads. A um, it has a little case to keep boiled ones in, bring them home. And this is a little washing um, bag. So that's one. And this other one is called Asinippy. And it has also got a little carrying case with two zippers. This holds clean. And this one would be for soil ones. There are, uh, this one has more in it. They are, there's a lot. <laughs> there are different sizes. The small, medium, and large. And we'll also be purchasing underwear to go with these. And so that is what we've been working on. We have, we are probably going to order 200 sacks, and uh, there'll be enough 
for the mothers. We want the mothers to have them first so that they can explain them to the girls and get behind the program because the mothers are, um, well, they're the, they're the secret to everything. <laughs> Let's face it. And so, um, and we're also, we're also doing a men's um, education, health education program for, uh, which is want, going to be run by one of our graduate scholars who is a medical doctor. And he is uh, very thrillingly volunteered to come and help any way that he can with health education for the men and the boys. So this is another additional program we're adding this time. Um, in addition, Terry will be doing some women's interpretive programs, uh, education, health education for uh, the, the um, girls in the elementary school and in the junior high, as well as a women's seminar again. And we also need um, suitcases. We, so we have to transport all these. And we can, they can be really large ones is what we'd like because these are not going to weigh much. And we can take 50 pounds in each of our suitcases. So if you have some old suitcases. Can you just soft? Yes, soft is fine. Yeah, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, we're still collecting things like crayons, pencils, pens, very, um, you know, everyday school items colored pencils, markers, that kind of thing. Um, first aid kits are always great for the teachers to have in school. And we are also, another program we're doing at the same time when we're over there is we're going to be helping culturally construct a new um, playground for the elementary school. The one that they have is very, well, it's dangerous, frankly. And so Amanel has donated money enough to cover a new playground for the elementary school. This was a request that came through the schools for us and it was a priority for them. So we're very excited to hopefully be able to put it in the best of all possible worlds. This is Donna, it may not happen, but it will happen eventually. <laughs> <laughs> our part, we, we paid for it, so we know we've done our part. Just one a very quick thing. This past week, we had a person step forward, not a member of this congregation. In fact, someone who's never been a part of the church that we're affiliated with and said, I want to cover this program for the uh, sanitary beds. And if we send those with a check of $4,200, which will totally cover the project. Incredible generosity when people feel that we make a difference. So we thank you folks for all that you've done. And you have done incredible We've had letters of thanks from graduates. We have people graduating from universities at this point. We have teachers, we have nurses, all that has been uh, you know, brought about because of your faithfulness, your support, and your generosity, as well as the generosity of many other people. So we are very, very grateful. We aren't worried about not having enough space in our suitcases. We get to take 52 suitcases each year, 50 pounds each, okay? So figure, we can carry a lot of sanitary pads. But seriously, we have 14 people going, each of whom can, I'm sorry, 42 uh, suitcases. 14 people going, each can have 350 pound suitcases. So yeah. we're excited about what we do. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I just want to let everyone know that children and youth are going to have an Easter egg hunt after church next week. So if have little ones coming, please bring them to church so they can enjoy the Easter egg hunt. And Emily, do we have any idea how we did on the um, thing yesterday? Well, I have just yesterday's amount okay. as opposed to um so at some point after our winter sale, anything that was sold in the back was being added to this current okay. sale. Okay. Yeah. And then we may have some more sales today, but the current total is 557. Very good. Thank you. Thank you to everybody who yeah. yeah. Thanks. You, you, you took it right there. I just want to thank everyone. Um, 
especially Emily and Amy for being my uh, co-conspirators, but definitely uh, the two gals that helped make this happen with me. Um, I couldn't do it without them, and I'm grateful for their support. Um, also for Barb McGrow and Charlie, everybody that has helped make the date this, and of course, all of you, Amy, yes, and all of you that came. Um, it, you know, hopefully will be something that will continue on and that we will do, and it will take on different forms. I did bring something for my two my two ladies, and you know, I could do this quietly, but I don't want to because they are such a big part of what happens with these fundraisers and being point of contact with everybody. So thank you. Okay. Yes, and we all get to benefit from well, our baseline get to grow due to all these wonderful fundraisers. Okay. Um, oh, because we 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 had a total of 557. Pretty good. Yeah. But well, we have more than that. Yeah. So there will be other sales and whatever happens today. But the deacons had hoped to maybe do a um, stations of the crosswalk behind St. Catherine's on Friday afternoon, but because of snow, we can't. So I just want to let you know that St. Something or other Episcopal Church in Portsmouth with the Black Heritage Trail is doing kind of a stations of the cross, a Black Heritage Walk through Portsmouth. And I would ask you all to uh, think about David and myself on Friday between noon and three. Um, we are thrilled. We, his daughter Carrie is going to take us to Barack Obama's church, Trinity Church, Southside um, Chicago. And I don't know, there's like 12 well known Black preachers that are going to be preaching on the last words of Christ. I mean, I'm going to have three hours of sermon, so I can walk around for the next few months. Right? <laughs> No, but this is going to be a, a unique and very special occasion for the two of us. So do think of us. And, and we won't be here for Easter, but a blessed Easter to all of you. All right. That's our announcement. Thanks, everyone.